I'm glad you're still with us here on Morning at NTV. The discussion behind the scenes has already heated up and uh, you'll be getting a little bit of it as we go along. It's the Kickstarter segment and for those that are just joining us, welcome on board. We are discussing the economics behind the broadening of the tax base. We shall also be looking into Uganda's tax policy as well as assessing the business tax system. This is all on the backdrop of the fact that there is a standoff between the traders within Kampala metropolitan area and Uganda Revenue Authority authority over the enforcement of AFRIS. AFRIS being the latest innovation by Uganda Revenue Authority to ensure that it goes for every person that ought to pay taxes. However, a traders say the enforcement is unfair and sometimes borders on humiliation and sheer force, including the use of uh, the military. Whether that will change remains to be seen. In studio, I'm joined by eminent persons who are John Walugembe is on my extreme left. He is the executive director at the Federation of uh, Small and Medium Enterprises. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure to join On his uh, right is uh, Mark Ruhindi, tax lawyer. Many thanks for joining us. Thank and you, Chris. Come on, new kid on the Morning at NTV blog, Robert Suna, is an economist. You're here for the first time, at least when I'm moderating. Yes, good morning, uh, viewers, and thanks, Chris, for inviting me over. All right. I'll begin with uh, the ED at the Federation for a Small and Medium Enterprises. First and foremost, the standoff has been well publicized, broadcast, yes. and mm. documented. The stalemate is on. There was no such meeting as thought or hoped by traders on Friday with mm. President Yuri Kaguta Museveni. Several mm. reasons were given. I don't know where we stand right now in as mm. far as that is concerned. We shall be delving into the nitty-gritty of the taxation policy later. Let's understand where we are on that. Well, I would say that um, the current standoff is unnecessary in my view. Mm. Uh, URA has done a poor job at educating the masses on these things. Say that again. For they have done a very poor job because th uh, it's a mandate of URA to educate taxpayers so that they know exactly what their obligations are. That's In this case, if business leaders are still calling if we say tax, that shows you that, that shows you now that URA has completely misfired. Number two is that they have taken a confrontational approach. Approach, yeah. Because you cannot take an army. Because you see, when you, uh, army men are used to orders, mm. they think about the consequences later. later because yeah. order is order in the army. You see? don't question. They can say slap John, they first slap you, then they ask, why did I slap him? See? So if you take such people to enforce th these kinds of things, especially when you're targeting a group that is ill-informed, you're likely to get problems. Number three is that URA has also, especially in the Chikubo area, targeting clients, people who are going to buy. Mm -hmm. Because the issue with IFRIS is that IFRIS is for now being piloted with VAT registered taxpayers. See, now you are arresting people. You, you have a, b b a, a what of a, a matchbox. Where did you buy it from? Take us. Where's the if we see? You no, know, this kind of uh, uh, untargeted uh, enforcement. So for me, I would say that the bigger burden should be on URA. People are not informed. But also, the other issue we need to interrogate that people are not looking into is you're not giving people the tools if risk you are supposed to operate online, ideally, you are a, or government should have provided what they call uh, electronic fiscal devices so that the, mm. it's easier for these traders yeah. to. But now they expect the trader to buy. Why should the trader buy an EFD? Government only procured, I think, only 400,000 pieces and gave them out. Now people are required to pay over a million. Too. So why should I pay for a device to give you tax? Doesn't. Uh, makes sense. Yeah. When you are uh, presented a budget uh, to government, they want to train the officers in climate change. <laughs> they want to train the officers in climate change. They want to hire, m you know, so th there's a misplacement of priorities. Yeah. So for me, I would get this budget of URA and buy EFDs and give them out, invest in awareness, give out the EFDs, 
have support teams that support traders to file and so on and reduce penalties because the other way that Chuara is making taxes through this ignorance mm. they try to make money through these penalties you see Educate Basically people taking first, advantage of just taking advantage of people's ignorance. So for mm. me, I would say that you are really is in the wrong on this one. Of course, the traders also need to also educate themselves That's because right. yeah. if you uh, and they have put very many issues, and mm. th that's also the other problem that yeah. I have. You know, if you're announcing a strike, let it be targeted. We are. This is we are opposed to the current harsh enforcement of IFRIS period. Period. But you can't say. You put all the problems in one strike. They are Chinese. Uh, we have IFRIS, then rental things. Are, so you have so many issues. You make it difficult for anyone to resolve them. No wonder they, they want to meet the president. You see, but now, even when they meet the, I mean, I can think to what the president will say. Okay, educate them, give them more time, and so on. But ultimately, this they IFRIS is going nowhere. Yeah. It's in all the neighboring countries. In fact, in Kenya, it's worse. Here, it's targeting VAT registered taxpayers. In Kenya, they are saying everyone should now issue receipts on free. So I think for me, the bigger burden is on URA. They have not taken their mandate of education very seriously. Mm. And, but also the traders, I think, uh, this lack, that lack of education has also been yes. taken care of, right. taken advantage of by certain groups to push diverse agendas. And as a result, we may find that we don't get a concrete kind of concession out of this because when you say we have very many Chinese, what do we do with them? Do we say you go back to your homes? Do we say like Idi Amin just close? You know, so these are all issues we need to interrogate. But for me, for the IFRIS issue, it boils down to education. Education, education. Okay, uh, that's uh, very interesting there. I hope, I don't, uh, rather not hoping, but uh, I'm thinking the president must have thought uh, this is a, a cocktail of issues and uh, until they can zero in on exactly what we are dealing with right now, but that will be good. The problem, however, is that traders have consistently had issues or pain points and many times when something that offers them the vehicle comes through they take it on because it's like teachers they will something a new policy will come up and then they will use that opportunity in order to have other issues uh, come on board. Mark Rohindi, I'll be coming to you very shortly, but allow me uh, crafting Robert Suna, an economist. Your reading of developments should be one that uh, we would, uh, of course, uh, uh, like to take. When all this happens in an economy that is struggling with uh, revenue collection, the tax base is very narrow. You would understand Uganda Revenue's position to be able to recoup any money that they can. However, the reality is that, like John Wolgembe says, that there are aspects that most traders or business persons in this country are grappling with, including technology adoption. Now, before you know whether they are actually savvy, you're bringing in something that requires them to use a technology that they are not savvy with, away from the fact that many might not be as educated as you want them to be in order to ensure efficiency and quick action, especially during enforcement. What's your take? Thank you very much, Chris, for that question. And uh, my friend, Oral has uh, submitted, making my startup very well. Um, the, f the first thing we must accept that is change, change is constant. And like Oral said, if this is here to stay, the earlier we embrace it, the better. The mechanism of enforcement by the revenue authority, notwithstanding, it gives a win-win situation. Mm. We are looking at an economy where we are trying to close tax leakages or loopholes. We already have a very narrow tax base where we are complaining that much of the tax burden is falling on a very few individuals. Mm. So by bringing on board mechanisms of making sure that everyone pays their fair share of the tax, it reduces the burden. It distributes the burden to most of us. Uh -huh. In which case, it means that uh, the burden felt by me mm. will be lower than if it were, not, it were concentrated on a few individuals. 
That's right. Going back to your question in terms of digitalization and making sure that we use technology as a mechanism of ensuring that we collect as many taxes as possible, I think, in my own opinion, from a policy analysis perspective, we sometimes have incoherencies in policies. Uh. And when I say incoherencies, we are trying to look at, for instance, internet penetration in our country. How many people can access internet before you even think of using it? <laughs> what is the cost mm. of using internet? What's the cost of a data bundle? How many can afford it? If, for instance, you go to the Chikubo people today and you are implementing a solution that requires a mobile phone, which is, which is smart, smart. Smartphone, yeah. A smartphone. I don't want to call them illiterate, so to say, they but they are e literate, some of them. e literate meaning that internet penetration, to use the e platforms. That's right. So it means if you are to implement such a solution, they need some bit of change management process. These people are keeping money, books of accounts. Mm. They are used to writing their receipts the way they want. No matter the volumes of transactions, by the way. That's right. They, they are used to do their work manually. So you don't expect them to adapt a solution in the shortest time possible. It should be a little bit gradual. The second component, what are the kind of people that are enforcing this implementation? I, I, I interact with so many bankers. They, 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 they have what they call know your customer. Uh. I've interacted with some traders in Chikuo, and what they tell me is that the people who are implementing the, if, the IFRIS, so to say, are not necessarily experienced staff of the URA who have stayed with them for a long time. Uh. You know, the longer you gain experience with the customer, the more you know their needs. That's right. Even at the design level of IFRIS, I think that would have been very important. It is one thing saying that IFRIS was introduced in 2018 and implemented in 2020. You can take as long as, as, as you can, but what has been the impact in terms of graduating from the design stage uh. to the implementation, to the enforcement, for people to appreciate it and be able to utilize it. So the traders are looking at it as, um, mm -hmm. as, uh, as something that will require an extra wage bill uh. to hire an accountant, to hire someone who is taking savvy to be able to assist them in uh, implementing it. But in the wrong land, the solution itself is very good. I look at a, a time when someone filing a VAT return will take a very short time because uh, his declarations are already safe in the system and they're already linked to the URA system so that they don't take so much time to be able to submit their what? Uh. To file their return. Okay. But as it stands, I think the Uganda Revenue Authority, like my colleague has said, needs to reinvest in tax education is always, tax awareness is always a constant thing. You mm. cannot, because tax is always evolving. Yeah, it evolves you, you cannot, reality. you cannot just say, uh, now I've finished educating. Even those who are there are still learning. Mm. So don't expect such a solution to be appreciated by, by, by the traders immediately. You need to gradually process it. That is one component. The second component, I think, uh, that I see with IFRIS is uh, beyond change management and tax mm. education, is uh, understanding the way business is crafted amongst people in Chikubo vis-a-vis -vis commercial traders who are large scale and uh, already formalized. That's right. Uh, I'll give you an example. You, you, you want to buy, for instance, a Congolese man comes to your shop, he has a bale of clothes he wants to buy, maybe 300,000. The way those guys operate in Chikubo is, he will be having clothing of 150, then he wants to pick up from another, from another person another shop, to, bring, yeah. to bring into his. So where do you portion the sales if you are to register in IFRS this time? Mm. So all those integrities should have been incorporated at the design stage. Then the other one is technology evolves also. What happens if I'm linking my system with the URA and tomorrow you want to upgrade? Who bears the cost? Are you going uh, to go back and then train them again that now the system has upgraded? The, the URL itself has been upgrading systems. Yeah, that's right. And they incur a lot of course to train their staff. How does that come to a person who is trading? So it, it will take a little bit of time, mm. but I want to imagine we need to go gradual. Enforcement should not be a little bit meat, meat, I want to use the word meat, eh? oh, you know, give me Militarized, the, yeah. Meatalized, yeah. Mm. It should be 
know your client. These these are people whom you need, and they also need you. So don't don't okay. make enforcement very very yeah. very I, radical. Yeah, I do gather that there is agreement on the fact that uh, a freeze is an innovation that is necessary for yeah. business to go forward. However, the implementation and execution of it is where the problem is. Yeah. I do not know whether Macro Hindi you have uh, information on uh, what could be benchmark on how a freeze has been rolled out in other countries, or it's something that uh, Edi World Gembe will help us on later. But if you have, please do. And then I, your specific question. I, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't. You, you I don't work, uh, well conversation. Okay. With, uh, I know. Uh, it will help so, us. So, on, so, on that. The, so the number of countries, one of the pioneering mm. countries in this space was Tanzania, Tanzania. during the Magufuli years. Okay. And uh, it became very tough on small businesses and so on. But, mm. you know, many of them started paying and so on. Mm. But the economy suffered as a whole because you see when you're introducing such solutions in a, 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 an economy that's mm -hmm. largely informal it means you are targeting a few people because mm. now let's uh, i don't know m many of you some of you who, if you have gone to agago where they spend one month without electricity mm -hmm. where there is no internet access and so on this business person, how are they supposed to manage in such a context? If we go to other, this Zombo, for instance. Mm -hmm. So it means this solution, in my view, when you are is coming up with such solutions, they need to have all these people in mind, not just the Kampala people, you see? So that, <coughs> in, in Tanzania, it's rolled out. In uh, Rwanda, Rwanda, it's quite w working well. Of course, yeah, Rwanda, you is, would uh, expect Rwanda, Rwanda is a different system. <laughs> Rwanda is a different system in the sense that you, you can't really start yeah, uh, dilly-dallying you know, around. Dilly dilly around When an order is given, you move. Mm. In Kenya, there's a bit of resistance now, because now the government has said everyone has to be on a freeze, and I'm sure they are going to have a bit of challenges, okay. because if you have people unregistered, if you have informal business owners, because you see the challenges with this freeze thing, you're going to knock out a lot of small businesses mm -hmm. from work, because if I'm VAT registered, I want to work with someone who is VAT registered, you know, so that I can claim my input tax. Yeah. See? Now, all of a sudden, if I'm a, I'll give an assertion of a restaurant. If I own a restaurant, previously I'll just go to Nakasero and buy, buy all the stuff. and yeah. stuff like that. But now, I have to look you for are a who is. wants to know <laughs> from whom did you buy so that they also go to that mm. person. Yes. Okay. So it means after some time I tell myself, ah, ah, let me get a briefcase or let me look for. Chris was a briefcase company mm. whose specialty is just to go to Nakasero and buy and issue invoices in his office. So it means the other person. Uh, thank you, you very much. You, you you we are disenfranchising them. He <laughs> just shared a business idea. <laughs> if, so, if anybody out there is watching, I don't, it's just very innovative. You create a company, you're the one who is able to issue all these receipts and stuff like that, and then you're helping a few people. Yeah, because these are SMEs are going to be struggle. You know. All right, Macro Hindi, uh, my apologies for coming to you a little late, it's but okay. take us through what is in the mind of Uganda Revenue Authority when it comes to broadening the tax base, but most importantly, going for those particular sources of revenue or taxes that haven't been clear sources, and that's what EFRIS is trying to do. Yes, yeah, so uh, you're asking a question that should mm. have been answered by someone who works with Uganda Revenue Authority. You're a tax lawyer. But, but I will. Tax <laughs> policy, is something, tax policy yes. is something that you can... So, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the Ugandan market is graduating from a culture of informality. Yeah. We have had all these years where businessmen thrived on uh, in informality and cutting corners and really having to do without coming to consultants like me mm. <laughs> yes but now <laughs> all right now it's a whole it's a whole different ball game the mm. market has transitioned to a stage where you can't do business without without consultants you can't if you try to do that then you it won't take more than three years before you take down the business especially for the high turn of our businesses okay so for the longest time businesses have grown from really tiny uh, humble beginnings mm. to behemoths yeah. without really having to pay tax. Mm. You have a businessman who goes down to Chikubo, sets up small and, and within a few yeah, years within a few years he's yeah. a, a, a millionaire, whatever. Mm. So 
that is what URA is targeting. And Chikubo is, uh, is really central to this economy. Uh, uh, traders from uh, far, yeah. as far as Bunia in, in, in Congo, in, Congo, in yeah. Burundi, shop from Chikubo. Mm -hmm. So when you have these tax leakages from transactions like that, those high volume transactions mm -hmm. being uh, uh, going undercover, being done, uh, uh, escaping the tax net, yeah. it's, it's, it has been a very big problem. And I think EFRIS is, is, is going to be a game changer from that perspective. So uh, the, 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 the attempt by government is to ensure that those uh, tax leakages are mitigated. Uh, like he has mentioned, uh, the, 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 the burden is not put on the few businesses that are already compliant. As, as more players are brought on board through EFRIS, and EFRIS will do that because you, 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 for you to be able to make, to make certain, a certain, to do a certain category of transactions, you have to do, you have to do them through EFRIS. So for you, for, you, for, you, for you to be able to grow, if you're running a tiny business, for you to be able to grow it into a large business, you can't do it without, without onboarding onto the EFRIS system. So it's targeting, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, the EFRIS is, in, is uh, the system is, is set in such a way that, uh, first of all, if you don't use it, you're penalized on, uh, from a commercial angle. Mm. You cannot grow a business if you don't run your, your, your affairs. If you don't comply, you can't mm. grow. That's, 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 that's the, the key, that's the key aspect of enforcement of EFRIS. Then the other thing is, uh, from a penal perspective, if you cannot uh, comply, you yeah, are penalized. Yeah. You, you, I think it's six million yeah. as penal as penal tax, <laughs> as penal tax for not complying under EFRIS. And you know, penal tax is is is, uh, is collected just as substantive taxes. Yeah. They collect penal tax just like uh, like the substantive tax that on, on which the penal tax is being levied. So uh, mm. the moment mm. uh, the moment businessmen fail to recognize that uh, compliance with EFRIS is now uh, there is there is no debate about it. Okay, you must do it. The earlier they uh, make that determination. They make the, 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 the earlier they 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 they, are, they, are they face the reality. They, exactly. Mm. The earlier they come to terms with that reality, the better okay. for 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 the economy and for them. All right. Now that calls on the Uganda Revenue Authority to rethink its uh, design. Okay. The design might not be completely oh, overhauled, but implementation and execution, yes. uh, so that there is fairness, but most importantly, educating. Now, that's a whole big budget on its own that falls on Uganda Revenue Authority that is already looking for money mm -hmm. to be able to do <laughs> other things. I think educating, uh, the, the URA has been doing tax education for the longest time. time. Mm -hmm. Efris. Why has it failed? No, it hasn't failed. It hasn't failed. Yeah. It hasn't failed. It's continuous. It's you, you let me intervene. Their educated. tax education is flawed. Okay, sorry. Oh, sorry. Dear. It's flawed <laughs> because you see, it's like saying that uh, a person who makes coffee should go and sensitize people on how to stay healthy. Understand? I say that again. A person whose business is to sell coffins has yeah. no business telling people to how stay to healthy, stay healthy because, because he'll be out of business. He'll be out of business. Mm -hmm. So you are a his task. <laughs> <laughs> you are a <laughs> Mr. Walgame. <laughs> taxation. <laughs> taxation. And I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from uh -huh. a perspective of someone who understands taxation. Mm, please. I have read taxation, uh -huh. I have practicing taxation. Taxation is very, very complex. complicated. Mm. Lawyers run off from taxation. Because of its complexity, and lawyers are some of the smartest. But it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. That's is. the whole point. Because it, if you it, bring a sophisticated tax system, you see, you see, to small if, businesses, if you're trying that's to why we are tax. not expanding the tax base when because you, you have brought this elitism, mm. and we are trying to say it's complicated. No, no, no. Understood by accountants. I, 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 I had lawyers. not finished. I had not finished my my, my okay. submission. Okay, please. <laughs> taxation is complex. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why taxation is complex really is because we don't want to pay tax. If there is a law, no, that's an when assumption. there is a law, when there is a law, generally when there is that's a law, assumption. when there is a law that is trying to levy tax, I will try to fight it. You will come to me to find loopholes to do tax planning to fight it. As a tax lawyer. Now, from my perspective.
from my work as a tax lawyer, mm. I will advise on how you can avoid paying that tax. Mm. Now, it is up to the government to come up with another layer of laws, of laws to, cover the, to cover me. To help itself and then, from and the now likes I of will go back. the client. Uh -huh, exactly. And now I will go back and look through that new law and cover and cover new law laws. And then, so that, uh, that, that cycle, that's why taxation is very complex. Because you can, it, it, the government cannot come to you and All right. pay tax. So I need to be simple, my brother. Would have but, no but Chris, but Chris, of the Chris, but Chris, no, uh -huh. but Chris uh, I cannot. Simple, yes. This yeah. is a fundamental issue. Mm. One, there's this assumption mm. that businesses do not want to pay tax. This is wrong. Businesses want to pay fair tax. There's no serious businessman who wants to grow his business who Without, wants uh, to thrive on dodgy tax. tax. And I give and I give <laughs> and I give and I give an explanation. You know, when we were young, we used to uh, cut open national water pipes and you know hey. use water for free and uh -huh. so on and so forth. But <coughs> now, because the cost of water is so cheap, there's no incentive. You understand? They are efficient. Yeah. Now we are asking you are have an efficient tax system without multiple taxation and so on complexity systems that are difficult to understand. You know, even the URA people don't understand if we spoke. That's what I'm this saying. This is the whole complex, point. Bro. How can you promote something that you yourself don't understand? Exactly. If you brought here six stuff from URA, you find that they are contradicting each other. Thank you. So it means that's so complex. Then. That's what we are that's saying. We don't want that right, taxation, right, taxation right. system should be allow simple. Me, allow me to put the question to Uganda Revenue Authority, live on air. Okay. <laughs> Claims are that your staff, including no, no. those that are responsible for the rollout of AFRIS, that's not for some. Not that's for not for me. No, may not. You know, <laughs> some, words, some words are important. May, may not. You are qualified. May not fully yeah. understand. Fully understand. To the effect that they contradict each other when asked the complexities of execution and stuff like that. Now that means Uganda Revenue Authority has failed no, no, no. on the Please. education and no, no, no. Uh, communication I think, aspect. I think the, the angle from which you should be coming from mm -hmm. is, the, is, is uh, trying to uh, task URA mm. to apply <coughs> to apply the law as it is or to come up with new regulations because you are can they have the mandate to come up with regulations. All right. This regulations. is a simple thing. Uh, URA sure. should be able to intervene, uh, not engage NTV so that we can work out a program that can be able to educate the masses and of we course that ensures we NTV gets some revenue. We, we agree. So we uh, agree. The, 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 the we need, to, they need to apply the need to apply the law mm. uh, 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 taking into mind, taking into account the the peculiar circumstances of this market, the realities, the realities of, the of this market, mm -hmm. the, that Kuiriba uh, yeah, those uh, culture, yeah, 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 the those Passo, nuances Passo. Yeah. that must be that must be addressed in the in the enforcement in their enforcement processes. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Of the efforts, which ideally is not a tax, and uh, people should be aware of that. Stop confusing it for a tax. It's simply a system that should ensure tax payment is efficient and time value added tax in value particular. added tax. Now let's come to the raft of taxes. Mr. Walgembe alluded to the fact that traders have misfired by <laughs> using a lot of pain points to carry along the Efris bandwagon. Mm -hmm. What and do you mean a lot of pain points? Pain but points in terms of the taxes. The wish list is the wish list so of long the things they want taken care of <laughs> are so many and they've used the AFRIS as an entry as point, point. Uh, more yeah, like they saw yeah. the conveyor belt passing yeah, yeah. and they were like, let's jump onto it. Yeah. Now, what are the are those pain points in terms of the tax? You said the taxes are so many. Uh, could you help us outline? Well, I think this is a question for Marco Hindi. Outline the, the, taxes, the plethora of taxes that the average businessman has to grapple with. What kind of businessman? Because I am also a businessman, but ah. I'm not trading in school. Well, rent or sales so tax. If if you're looking at retail business, let's mm. let's uh, restrict the discussion to the Chikubo. Re Chikubo, oh, no. okay. And I think many of them are watching us. Oh, thanks. If you're thanks looking so at the if you if you're looking at the retail business, mm. you're looking at uh, uh, buying stock from manufacturers or importing stock from mm. manufacturers. The moment you import. Uh, uh, an item into the country, that item is, is, is it, it pays VAT. You pay VAT if you're trying to resell that item. The import VAT you pay. And I think this is a problem many of the Chikubo, Chikubo people are having. They import in bulk 
under say one importer a container a container is consigned to a single importer mm -hmm. and that single importer is the one who pays tax that's right uh, the, the rest of the uh, the rest of the, the rest of the people in there they, they the smaller businessman in there they pay now they pay to this importer but that, that's, that's failure to uh, take into account the fact that this this vat that has been paid comes at as a tax credit mm -hmm. to a taxable person so now the consignee is uh, is one and yet there are like 20 businessmen 20 traders in there mm. so only that one person can cl can claim this input tax and meanwhile he won't and mean uh, and meanwhile the other 20 are losing are meant are, are, are meant to pay uh, that uh, now the 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 the, the, the their tax their vat is paid off of their markup so one of the problems i think one of the problems they are having is if, the moment they address that issue the fact that they are they have not properly appreciated the the, the, the fact that vat at importation comes as a tax credit mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed their leaders need to need, need to make sure that the, that is addressed he is one of the mm -hmm. leaders of the business. But one is of it the their leaders. responsibility? It is your uh, yeah. uh, first of all. It's your it is uh, not, uh, no, you, I think no. you're heaping too much, too much, and and you burden on your education. Uh, tax, it's not like tax education. My interest, your uh, interest, is to collect as much tax as possible, isn't it? That's right. My interest is to ensure that my businesses remain profitable and remain in business. You, uh, so, you, but you can collaborate with your uh, but. Sometimes our objectives may not necessarily be aligned. What we are saying, you are should do its job. The primary task of tax education lies squarely on you. On you are my, my it cannot be delegated. If they are delegating it to us, we are happy to get part of their budget of tax education. We are yeah. happy to yeah, get yeah, but, but on that but, note, uh, on that but, note, Mr. Uh, yes. do you wish to agree uh, as a leader of the small businesses that some businesses think that a VAT is actually supposed to be part of their profit instead that's of the, saying that's that the, that's the, that's the problem. Government, they are collecting it from the government but they think it's part of their markup. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they yes. the failure to understand that this is not their money. They are collecting this is money that is collected on behalf of the government. So and actually we are soon going to have another problem. There is another Wait a minute. There is on another top complex of the problems already helped. Yeah. <laughs> there is another complexity to VAT known as VAT withholding. VAT mm. withholding. Now you have uh, you have uh, uh, Mr. Sona here, yes. and you have Mr. Walugembe. This mm. is a taxable trader, this is a taxable, a taxable uh, person, yes. and this is a taxable person. Yes. Mr. Walugembe is not, uh, Mr. Suna is not compliant, Mr. Walugembe is, is compliant. compliant. So now what happens, URA comes to him and tasks him to collect now VAT from from him. Him. in advance from him. That is a big problem because you take you, now you're taking into account the cash flow, uh, the, 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 the cash flow, the cash flow element. Money, yeah. Yes, yeah. you're tying down uh, a, a portion of someone's working in capital capture. for some time, even if it's a week in trading, even even days. Mm. It's, 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 it's very, it's very, it's, it, it counts for these businesses, especially, mm. especially the, the small turnover businesses. So uh, the, another problem traders are going to be having is that because the data that URA is collecting through that onboarding on EFRIS uh. is now going to have them widen the, 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 the there is a list of withholding agents. It's now going to have them widen that list. Yeah, but that if, point. If, uh, if, if, okay, if, if a supermarket is yeah. coming to downtown to, to Chiku or uh. to, to buy, then probably that supermarket is a withholding agent. It means most uh, with whoever from whoever it buys from it is going to be holding a vat and, and remitting it to URA in advance even before it's due that's interesting so, so allow me allow me go to mr walgambe simply because of the fact that uh, your leader of uh, people who are engaged in <coughs> his yeah. business yeah. the nitty-gritty of it he spoke about the fact that an importer uh, can meet the greater part of the tax yet there are so many other uh, people who are depending on a particular container or two mm -hmm. and that is something that should be an internal job within traders to rectify not 
URA when you speak about the following no. URA issue. And that is a commercial no, that issue, issue, not a commercial issue. issue. Okay, so, not a so first issue. of all, so tell us about what the regime no. is right now in terms of doing business like that. I know it's efficient for those that are yet. No, the issue is the to issue to is, and you see that itself. that's the challenge we have. Mm. There's an optimal rate of tax. If you exceed it, you're shooting yourself in the foot. It's like having a school and saying, I'm charging five million shillings, mm -hmm. and all the students leave. Yeah? It will not increase your income. And that's the mistake that you are is doing. Things by raising the tax rate, it's going to have more people within the net. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is, you need to make the tax system simple and easy to comply with and cognizant of the local realities. They, their own data shows that companies are shrinking. Mm. Someone used to pay billion is now paying 500 million. Someone used to pay 500 million is into since COVID. Below 100. And we didn't have, we, yes, we came up with these measures to support small businesses, but none of them were concrete. And so businesses are closing. Now, instead of saying, how do we support these businesses to have flow, we have been introducing harsher a harsher taxation regime. Mm -hmm. And what will happen? Businesses will close. Will we collect more tax? Not necessarily. And this is the argument we need to have. Instead of getting lost in the nitty gritties, 18%, because 18% of zero is what? So for me, <laughs> I, I don't want to, because if you look at the <laughs> rental tax, this income, is, uh, no, because you asked how many, uh -huh. what, the tax burden, yeah. you asked about the tax burden. Mm. Income tax. If I work and I'm an employee mm -hmm. like you, you mm -hmm. pay as you are. Is pay it as it? you are. Uh -huh. Now that actually takes away all the money. It takes away the money. The balance you go and invest in rental property. You have to pay rental tax. But also now they have introduced they have increased the excise duty on cement. So it means cement is going to be more expensive. They have introduced excise duty on diesel. So it means transporting the the sure. the, the cement to the site has become more expensive. They have said that any sale of a non-business asset, any gain you make, 5% mm. to government. So it means the land, buying land is going to become more expensive. And they have given you only 15 days after the sale. Mm. You have, to be able to remit You must have paid. If you don't, uh -huh. the penalties so, are harsh. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, when you take mineral water, they have made it more expensive. When you are thirsty and you are supervising your site, <laughs> Then in the evening, when you go to take beer, they have also increased money on opaque beer. You understand? So it means that, actually, they are not expanding the tax base per se. They are simply running after the same money. After they have taxed it here, mm -hmm. they run after you. When you are building, they come, hey, Mr. Chris, we have found you again. <laughs> when you take what, hey, Chris. When you go take beer, hey, Chris. You see, so <laughs> how do we, <laughs> Robert Suna, so how do we ensure? The, uh, give us the ego eye mm -hmm. view of the economy in light of uh, what mm -hmm. Mr. Walgebe explains there. It yeah. shows that there is, everyone is grappling with a problem, mm -hmm. including the people who are targeted by those that are at the policy making uh, level. Thank what? you. Yeah. I understand where Mr. Walgebe is coming from. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, there has been a, a chronicle saying that uh, no country can tax itself out of poverty. Mm. But I also want to, to go to the basics and mm. understand that uh, Fundamentals. we may not survive without again taxation. Sure. Yeah, sure. So it's a it's a chicken egg arrangement. Uh, you pay tax, you expect something, or you expect something after paying tax. But surprisingly, the economists will tell you it's a non quid pro quo. You, you pay and you don't expect. But that's a story for another day. Mm. But let's think about uh, the, 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 the economic output, and that's where Mr. Algeme may be very right. Uh, when we discuss tax base, people think it's the number of taxpayers or taxable persons on the tax register. That is totally different. Mm. The base means the number of economic activities from which you can collect what? Tax. Tax. Mm. So the larger that economic output uh, expands, the better for you. So whenever the government makes interventions to support growth, it is creating more opportunities for more economic activities from which they can do what? More tax. For more businesses. Uh -huh. From where they can tax. Mm. You get? 
So why he's saying they are looking at the same guys means that the economy is not expanding. But I will also tell him that when we are measuring the tax effort of URA, tax effort means uh, how much they can collect. Uh, we use the ratio, tax to GDP ratio. GDP is the total economic output of the country. So you cannot tell me economic fundamentals are telling me that the economy is expanding 5 to 6% annually and your tax to GDP ratio is stagnating at 13%. Something is fundamentally not right. Mm. But are the statistics of GDP growth correct? Yes. Because you see the issue is... No, no, no. Let me finish my... Let me finish. You may be inflating growth and that's why people are saying... I'm 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 submit so that... So, but the structure of our economy is now what defines... The growth may be growing, but uh, is the growth that amounting to taxation? You get? That's where we are talking. That's where the, the issue of uh, uh, these guys who are growing actually ta taxable. So when you see, for instance, you're having 80% uh, people, 80% of your population in agriculture, is that agriculture monetized to be able to pay tax? So that mismatch, where are the developed countries? Those guys you see, they're having ratios of 25% to, to GDP. Actually, their GDP growth is even very slow. It's actually lower than ours. Lower than ours, yeah. you get? Yeah. So that mismatch is what we need to understand. How, many of the, how much of the growth is actually contributing to taxation? And now, if you can't yeah. solve that question mm. from the policy perspective, which I'm usually against, tinkering with the tax laws, mm. It comes now to the administration burden. That's where you're feeling the pinch by the Ghana Revenue Authority. If the policy perspective has not supported to generate many economic activities from which they can collect, they will go back to the same guys or to the design of the law, try to change a few words, change a few sentences so that this guy is now captured. That's for them that's why they are calling broadening the what? The, the base, the base yeah. and, 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 and you see that's, that's, mm -hmm. and that's how that's how Africa now let, let so if you have to support Mr. Walugemba <laughs> and his guys <laughs> if, to grow if if you have if you have NTV mm. already compliant mm. you want to make sure that whoever sells to NTV uh -huh. is compliant you, if they are not compliant, then they don't. They lose the opportunity to sell to NT. Exactly. So that's why Efris is a game changer for. Yeah, but for, exactly. But you can also right, support the liberty of many NTVs to open. You know. Right. Now let's, Chris. <laughs> please. We'll come back here. We'll procedure. come back in three yeah. years. These are all young people, mm -hmm. and we'll start dissecting mm -hmm. because they are saying it's a game changer and so. On. Yes, it will have marginal benefits mm -hmm. for sure. But then economy where digital penetration is very low, and I've mentioned yeah, it's very low, where you have the majority of your businesses micro and small they are not even registered and so on yeah. what is going to happen here is that if this is going to consolidate businesses within a few that's what I talked about yeah. while Ugembe sets up five briefcase companies that issue if this invoices on time mm -hmm. but he's not involved in production that's right you exactly. see so I this, 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 I this may appear I this may appear problem. this may appear to work for you are in the short term but long term it won't the best because this, this right man more this John, briefcase yes companies. this John with these briefcase companies, is mm -hmm. not, not growing, his business is not employing so more people. Not so so I, <coughs> I, I think I, I disagree with him. Mm -hmm. How? Businesses must be able to adapt to changes in the commercial environment. Mm -hmm. one, one rule of business that you cannot run off from mm. is adaptation. If you cannot adapt to technology, if you cannot allow, to, if you cannot adapt to the the change, so that the change that, in the change in the how are you going to that argument? Oh. That argument negates the reality that businesses have been thriving for all this while without necessarily adopting to any a streamlined way of, for example, interacting with the Uganda Revenue Authority. Here we have the reality that. People are in business, no doubt. There is exchange of goods and services. Mm -hmm. There is aggregate demand effective mm -hmm. by the population. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's low or anywhere between what other people might classify as good or bad, but it's going on. So how do we move forward on this from the tax policy perspective? I think from a tax policy perspective, we, we, I, I agree with him mm. when he says we need to go gradual. Gradual, yeah. Much as there has been time for businesses to adapt to uh, to, to the to, to the new commercial to the new regu regulatory environment, we must bear in mind the realities mm. of our market. And like I said, like like the, 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 uh, in, uh, the example of some of the some of the some of the issues he has pointed out, mm. 
uh, in regards to the internet penetration, you know, power, power outages, and so on. Mm. Uh, so, and then the, the the other issue to take into account is that the the the, the, the VAT threshold of 150 million. I think it. I, I think it's more than 10 years since that. It's too yeah. low. It's too yeah. Low. So yeah. that 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 VAT threshold is too is too low. 150 million is now very little money. Mm. You take picture, picture, a picture. Uh, this scenario, you're a VAT trader, and you suddenly, right, right, you're a Chikubo trader. And suddenly, you have to comply under air freeze. Mm. You 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 don't you don't you don't know any tax. You don't know any accounting. So your business is turnover is 150 million, and that is turnover. Mm. That's not gross. profit. That's mm -hmm. gross. That's mm. turnover. And you know our traders, the margins are really tiny. So of the 150 million, the profit is probably about about the 30, 40 million. Mm. Now on that 40 million, now you're tasked to come to a consultant like me okay. and pay me a retainer of uh, 15 million uh, ah, to be able to help you run books. your business. Yeah. That's interesting. How, <laughs> how, will, how will you absorb that? Gentlemen, so, I'm going to have to go for a break. Yeah. Um, receiving reports that uh, there is some closure of uh, shops that is still on, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. In, uh, in the central business district. Yeah, My yeah. colleague, uh, Stephen Bide, will be updating us very shortly on that okay. when we return from the break. But do prepare your submissions on what should be done to broaden the, the, the ability of the economy to actually generate productivity. Right. That is very important. Yeah. When we return, that mm -hmm. conversation will continue and a wrap will be provided by the gentleman in the studio. Stay with us. places <coughs> in the central business district. That is the state of affairs. A businessman continuing to protest the implementation of the AFRIS uh, uh, innovation by Uganda Revenue Authority. Their concerns, I think, will be addressed. We've done our very part as morning as at NTV or the media in amplifying this particular cause. Now, allow me to return to the studio and do a wrap up with this Kickstarter discussion where we've been talking about the tax base and how it can be broadened in light of either fixing or introducing new innovations in tax policy. With me in studio, I have uh, Robert Suna, an economist, making his uh, debut on Morning at TV. I also have uh, Mark Rohindi, a tax lawyer, as well as uh, John Walgembe, the executive director at the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises. Gentlemen, let me begin from my extreme left. This is a wrap. GDP is a growing concern, and when you hear or see the statistics that are rolled out on a daily, they are too rosy for the reality on the ground. Now, if government doesn't have money and it seeks to widen the base for which it can recoup some revenues, and then it has the reality is that there is a narrow base right now, and that's why the traders are being pushed and pinched hard. What options should government be looking at away from, say, Chikubo or the Central Business District in order to be able to, like the going, the, the, nar the narrative is widen the tax base. Okay, so, uh, first of all, before we talk about earning more money, mm. we need to look at how we are managing the resources that we have. Because if you have a leaking basket mm. and you say this cup is faulty, you know, I need to go to the river so that I put in more water. You're not going to solve the problem. So what we are saying is that we need to cut wasteful expenditure and make sure that we live within our means. Mm -hmm. Since COVID, the economy has not been doing well, but the budget has been growing exponentially. Now we are at 58 trillion. See, the cost of public administration is ballooning. Now we have a new innovation called service award. <laughs> these things, <laughs> these things are a pain mm. to right. businesses. Okay? Because according to the public service standing orders, mm. if you serve well, you can be recognized on Heroes Day, you can be given a medal, and mm. so on. So this, this cutting, this is something that we need to address. The other issues around export promotion, mm. we need to focus on industrialization that's geared towards exporting. 
The other issue is around domestic borrowing by government. We need to avoid this and go back to concessional lenders. Okay. Macro Hindi? I think I've written about this before. I think government needs to tax agriculture, especially the, the, very, the very wealthy ranchers. Mm -hmm. All the meat we eat in Kampala comes from those people and they're not paying tax. There wow. is a way to tax them through withholding. Mm -hmm. It has worked. There is a tax that is being introduced on land transactions. Let them move it to that uh, side of the economy. Okay. At least a portion of it. Robert Suna. Thank you very much. I, I think much of it, my friends, have alluded to, but uh, I was happy with the recent uh, pronouncement by Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Finance by yeah. cutting expenditure on foreign travels. I mean, saving the country 2.2 trillion. <laughs> but I see the, the Parliament was not happy. That's, that's the starting point. Yeah. Reduce uh, expenditure. I mean, if we have no other sources, reduce expenditure. But also, we, we may not need to tinker so much with the tax policy, but improve administration. It doesn't have to be militaristic, but there are many leakages. Make sure that everyone pays their fair share. Mm. There the, the are people who are meant to pay and don't what? Don't pay. They get directives. Please, oh, okay. this one won't pay. If you, if you have an uneven distribution of compliance, the tax model will be lowered and people will no longer pay. So make sure whoever is supposed to pay pays their fair share to encourage tax model. All right. Robert Suna, economist, thank you very much. Mark Rohindi, it's been a pleasure. And uh, John Welgembe, always a pleasure to have your submissions on Morning at NTV. When it comes to government owning up, well, the Daily Monitor doesn't have uh, the best of news. Mm -hmm. We now do understand that the House, that is Parliament, is seeking 125 billion Uganda shillings per diem and salaries. This is in light of uh, reported attempts to cut that budget. It has apparently been rejected and instead an increment endorsed by Parliament. Of course, we all know that Parliament does appropriate its own money. This is the latest development. Whether these views expressed on Morning at NTV can be adopted also remains to be seen. Now, it's time that uh, we do our very last ritual. And uh, this morning, we are wishing a happy birthday to two people, Engineer Muhezi Victor. Your family, your daughter, your wife Donham, Irene, Anita and friends are saying as you add another candle of 